Hi, my name is Gail Shanks. I'm one of the owners here at Changing Hands Bookstore. And today I'm going to talk to you about some books that I love and I hope you'll want to read this month. So the first book I want to tell you about is a book that has been out for just a couple of months now. But I have to say that as I think about books that I've read, it's one of my favorite books I think I've ever read. It's a book that includes six or seven short stories by Russian giants. Tolstoy, Gogol, Chekhov. It is a book for readers and a book for writers. George Saunders, who is an incredible writer himself and teaches writing to students at Syracuse University, has designed a course not only for his students but for people like me who don't write but wish they did, but are avid readers who don't always understand how stories come to be so compelling. And what he's done in this book is taken these short stories by these giants in Russian literature and dissected them. He goes paragraph by paragraph, line by line sometimes, page by page, and helps you understand why a story works. By the time he finished talking to me about them, I was completely sold on what they were. It's a book that is going to help you rethink how you think about the words that are written on a page. It's also an absolutely brilliant audiobook. Libro FM did this book and George managed to get half a dozen readers to read the short stories and their actresses and unknowns who are just incredible readers. So either way you do it, if you read it yourself, or you listen to the audiobook, I think it's one of the best things going right now. The next book I want to tell you about is a book called Vera by Carol Egerian. And it's a book about the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco. All of us have heard about the earthquake, the big one, as they call it in California. But until you read this novel, you won't have any idea what it was like to live through that earthquake. Not only did the ground open up and make a giant crack through the entire city, but fires started and they started burning the city to the ground. You get to see this story through the eyes of a madam and through the eyes of her daughter who she gave up when she was a tiny baby and allowed someone else to raise for her. It's just a great story. It's going to keep you reading, turning every single page until you're done. And again, you will know so much about what you didn't know about earthquakes. Leonora in the Morning Light is a book about Leonora Carrington, probably an artist that few of you have ever heard about before. But she was a surrealist artist who was the lover of Max Ernst, who perhaps you have heard about. This is a book written by a woman who is a bookstore owner herself. She owns Peregrine Bookstore in Prescott. And she has done incredible research about this particular movement in art history, one that the Nazis deemed degenerate and attempted in their goodwill to put all of the degenerate artists into jail or concentration camps. So it's a book that's going to give you a historical perspective about art, the era in Germany when these artists were painting. And also it's just an incredible story about how women never seem to come up to the heights that men did in spite of the fact that they were the better artists, in my opinion. I think I'm ready to move with you to nonfiction. I don't know why I even started to read this book. It's a book about two 87-year-olds 
who are at the end of their lives. They've had a 65-year-old marriage, and one of them is a renowned psychiatrist, Irv Yalom. He has written novels, as well as dozens of books on therapy. And his wife, Marilyn, who herself is a writer and has written books on French culture, literature, and feminist history. At the end of her life, she developed a very bad strain of cancer and was dying and knew that she was dying. She and her husband decided that they were going to write a book together. They had written books before, but they decided that they wanted to write this book about how does one end a marriage and end a life in a positive and active way as opposed to a depressed and unhappy. And so they decided they were gonna write alternate chapters, she writing one and he writing the next. And they often write about the everyday of their lives. She talking about how she wants to divest herself of her possessions, give them to one of her four children. He saying he wants to hold on to those possessions because those are the things that connect him with this love of his life that he, whom he has known since he was 16 years old. So it is really a look at love in all of its forms and aging and the way that we grow older, either gently or difficultly or in a way that we want to live and to choose to live and also to choose our own death and how we would like to die. It really touched me deeply, made me think about how I will come to the end of my own life one day, how my marriage will end, and how people in their lives grapple with these end of life issues. Beautiful writing and a really interesting look at relationships. Just Us by Claudia Rankin is a book that I am working through with four other women who I'm involved with in a social justice group that meets every week. You can see by all of my little sticky notes on the side that there has been a lot to talk about. Claudia Rankin has done something in this book on thinking about whiteness and racism that was so unique, it made me think out of the box in so many ways. She's a poet. She has a deep regard for artists and photographers, so the book is just filled with all kinds of photos, graphs. She's determined to have source material so that when she talks about racism in any way, she has information to substantiate what she's what she's writing and she makes you think to the point where sometimes your brain just hurts i have been so grateful to have these women to talk about this book with because there have been chapters where i've read them and i just couldn't quite figure out where i was in that chapter and i wanted to be there so strongly because I knew that the issues that she was talking about were my issues and the way that I was perceiving the world in a not so great way. And I am learning deeply where my own racism is and how to talk about it and how to move out of that space. And I have just, I couldn't recommend this book more highly. Jackie Polson has written a book about chickens. It's called Brood. It's a novel, but it almost reads like a memoir or a self-help book. The chickens provide kind of a metaphor for how life could be led if you lived in the frozen world of Minnesota and you had four chickens and you were trying to keep them alive through this frozen winter with light bulbs and blankets 
the story is really about a marriage. It's about a woman grieving the loss of her ability to have a child. It's about the little things in our lives that matter. She has this way of talking about chickens that is really about the everydayness of life. At some point, her husband, who she's kind of mixed about <laughs> in terms of their relationship, she's not 100% sure this is the right guy for her. And he's not sure she's the right woman for him either. She'd like to be caring for a child, but she ends up caring for chickens. She would like to be caring for her mother, but her mother doesn't really let her into her life. I just thought it was unique in its writing and a curious story about how life just kind of moves and you can go along with it or you can dig your heels in. The decision is really up to you. And you can be a chicken <laughs> or you can be brave. This woman was kind of both. Beautiful writing, curious characters, a look at a cold frozen land like Minnesota that a desert woman like me doesn't really understand that well. So now I want to just tell you about a few of my favorite books that I read last year that have finally made their appearance in paperback, which is great because they're a lot cheaper and they're lighter weight and you can hold them and you can read them in the bathtub. You can read them in bed without them clunking you in the face and they're really great stories. So the first one is James McBride's Deacon King Kong, an odd title for a book I know. The Deacon is the name of someone in the book who has another nickname and that nickname is Sport Coat. He's a guy in his probably 70s, he lives in the projects in the Bronx. And one day he walks into the street, pulls a gun out of his pants and shoots one of the biggest drug dealers in the Bronx in the ear. The whole story revolves around why did Sport Coat walk into the street and shoot this drug dealer? So funny that I just laughed out loud in bed, often waking my, my bedmate. There's crazy names, not only is there Sport Coat, but his best friend's name is Hot Sausage, and his son, who is unfortunately blind and is taken care of by a lot of the people who live in the projects, his son's name is Pudgy Fingers. They're complex, they're silly, but they have a depth to them that is, is really extraordinary. There are drug dealers, there are mafia, folks. There are church goers. There's the women who run the, the food program at the church. They all have their own little piece in this story. There are so many characters that at first you think you can't keep them straight, but McBride does such a great job of identifying each and every one of them in their own quirky ways that soon you come to love them all. It's beautifully written and it's a great story. Again, if you are a person who likes to listen to books, the reader on this audiobook was terrific too. So Liz Moore's book, Long Bright River, is another book, believe it or not, about drug dealers. You'd think I was like on a thing with drug dealers. A very interesting book that I think you would call a literary mystery. I would call a literary mystery. It's about two sisters whose mother died of an opioid overdose when they were young and they were taken in by a very angry grandmother who could not believe that her daughter was a drug addict and had left her with two young children. The girls grow up and one of them, Mickey, becomes a cop on the streets and the other daughter, Casey, becomes a drug addict herself and a prostitute. Mickey beat is the same beat that her sister Casey has as a prostitute and one day Casey disappears. And so the story revolves around Mickey's fear that something terrible has happened to her sister looking back at what her childhood was like 
and what might have caused her sister to choose this path, and actually what caused her to choose this path of being a cop with a four-year-old daughter who she has to leave with friends when she's out doing her job. The writing is beautiful. The story is compelling. If you're looking for a mystery this summer, if you're reading on the beach, this is the perfect one. That's where I read it last summer when it came out in hardcover. And I just thought it was one of the best mysteries I'd read in a long time. A Paragon is the book that I would put right up there with the George Saunders book. This was my favorite novel that I read over the last year. I just couldn't read anything that I liked any better for a while. But Colin McCann is a wonderful writer who has a sensibility about words and he is an extraordinary wordsmith. This book is told in a thousand and one small bits. It's about the Palestinian and Israeli conflict told through two incredible men, one Palestinian, one Israeli, who lose their 10-year-old daughters to the enemy, to the other side, and decide that instead of seeking revenge for their daughter's deaths, they are going to figure out a way that no other father ever has to go through what they went through themselves. And the way that they did it was they came together to talk about how can you bring about reconciliation in a country that for hundreds of years has always been us and them, someone who's up and someone who's down. While he's doing this, he's teaching you about bird migrations and the history of the land itself, how water that is so rare in Israel, just like it is here in the desert, was conserved and used to grow plants and sustain the people that lived there. So you get a whole inside story about the, the planet, the land, the, the wildlife, the flora, that you just didn't know you were even interested in and then find that it, in its little bits, contribute to this bigger story of politics and the history of two different sets of people. I picked Leonard and Paul by Ronan Hessian because we're at the end, I hope, of the pandemic. And one thing that I've learned during this pandemic is that kindness goes a long way toward helping us get through things in our lives. And this book about two men, Leonard and Hungry Paul, is about two men who figured out that a relationship that revolves around board games, talking about philosophy, and friendship is the cement that can bind people to one another and change the way we think about ourselves. It's quirky, it's beautifully written, it has poignant moments that just can bring you to your knees, but it's also this novel that when you finish, you want to hand it off to 20 people that you know and say, read this book. And I just loved it for that. And it's coming in paperback. So when buyers are buying new books for the store, they often get manuscripts early on, even as early as a year before the book is going to come out. And sometimes we're reading these in a format that looks like this, with a spiral binding, doesn't even have the author's name on the cover. Sometimes they look like a real book like this, except this is a paperback version of what is going to be a hardcover. And sometimes they look like this. Again, a bound manuscript with tiny type or huge type, and we read them and we think about them and we recommend them and we get excited about them and then we have to wait for months until they come out. So I'm gonna just talk to you about books that I am hugely anticipating coming out and I'm hoping that all of you will get so excited yourselves that you will 
pre-order these books on our website because when you pre-order these books from us, again, you're supporting Changing Hands as you've all done so loyally through the pandemic and through all these 47 years we've been in business. Pre-ordering books is just one more thing you can do to help your local independent bookstore. I think I'm gonna start with Anthony Doerr's books because you know him from a novel he wrote probably six years ago called All the Light We Cannot See. It is with great anticipation that his readers are waiting with bated breath, as they say, for his new one, and here it is. The new book is called Cloud Cuckoo Land. It's as different from all the light you cannot see as two novels can be, and yet, in so many ways, it is Anthony Doerr at his writing best. It's a novel that has multiple characters covers multiple time frames from the early first century to the future. The characters are tied together curiously by an ancient story written by a Greek whose name is Diogenes. And throughout the book, this little parable moves its way from chapter to chapter, character to character, time sequence to new time sequence. And you think, how is that possible? How could you take one story and tie it into these different historical time frames? And what I want to tell you is I couldn't believe that he could do it, but he did. It's a beautiful story in and of itself. But what really makes this book special is the ways that all of his characters move together through their own time and bring about changes in their own lives. I can't wait for you to be able to read this book because I want to talk to every one of you about it. This book, Damnation Spring, written by Ash Davidson, is coming out early this summer. So Ash Davidson has written about a family, a father, a mother, and a young four-year-old child. This family lives in a small logging community in Northern California, and the father works for a logging company. And what he does is he cuts down redwood trees. So at this point, you might want to gasp and say, Oh my gosh, redwood trees, those tall trees that can be 25 feet wide and 100 feet tall, they're going to cut them down and that's okay? It's not okay, but it's part of a way of life. People who earn their living by logging have to do in order to survive. It opened my eyes. I will tell you that I am an ardent environmentalist and the idea of cutting down thousand year old redwood trees just doesn't sit with me at all, it sits horribly with me. But as I was reading this book, I realized that I had to rethink how I thought about trees and people and water and children, old growth and young growth, logging camps and men who own the logging camps and men who work for the logging camps who are often injured and then dismissed from their jobs because they can't do them any longer. It's a beautifully written story. She's a wonderful writer. She lives in Flagstaff and works at the Grand Canyon. So she knows about the natural world because she lives in the natural world. And she really helped me get the whole picture of what it means to take care of the planet, take care of our water, and take care of trees. And I have to applaud her for a brilliant first novel. Thank you so much for listening. It was so much fun for me to be able to talk to you about these books. I'm hoping that you're gonna come into the store and ask for them by title. Look for them on our website. Of course, you know how much we appreciate you being our customers and we would love it if you let us know what you thought about this. If there's anything that 
is not yet out, as I mentioned, you can pre-order on our website or by calling the store. As always, I'd love to see you. So come and say hi. Let me know what you're reading.